Hello, hello, hello again, friends. Um, today I'm going to have another painting for you. This time we're going to be painting in acrylics. And uh, I'm going to be working on a six, I mean, I'm sorry, an eight by ten canvas panel. It's a Centurion LX. Um, you can find the materials that I'm using and the description link and the description and there'll be links to all the brushes, paint and canvas panels that I'm using uh, for this painting. So what are we painting today? Well, it's something a little bit different. We have a mountain scene. I think this should be relatively simple enough for you guys to follow along and try and paint this. I thought it was a nice scene the way it was framed. Um, and you know, the subject is very simple, not too many clustered things put together there. So anybody I think can follow along on this one. So the colors that I'm using, cad yellow, cad orange, cerulean blue, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, burnt umber, and titanium white. Again, this is acrylics. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna start by, uh, let me see, perhaps, let me use a little bit of cerulean blue to start off the painting. Uh, let me see, I got this mountain starting right about here. Don't have to be exact, just approximate. All right, I got the big rocky right around. See, the bottom of the rock is about right here. Side of the rock. Just look for the overall. Uh, big shapes. I got the flowers that are coming up here. And I think I have another set of mountains in the back here. There you go, that's it. So to start my darks, I'm gonna start with ultramarine blue. Burnt umber. Not too much because I see a lot of blue and um and this rock. And the picture will be posted in one of the corners somewhere. So, as you can see, I'm not too, and I can vary how much brown I wanted this, how, in, in this, how much blue. Perhaps I could even use a little bit of, oh, I forgot to tell you, I have a lizard and crimson sitting right here. I put it right there because I forgot to put it in between these colors here. Uh, so, please forgive me. So I'm using a little bit of a lizard and crimson in this whole ordeal here as well. Burnt umber. And blue. Make it a nice um, chromatic dark here. I'm not using any black for this. Rarely will you ever see me use black. I mean, it's up to you and your painting style, but I see, let me see, a little bit of orange with that color and some white, maybe some uh, cerulean blue here, some warm colors from the sun.
while it's wet, let some of these colors blend together. There you go. Let me mix a little bit more darks here. On this side, I can see that I missed that. There you go. Now the values that I'm using, it's not too dark, not too light. I'm trying to get like a middle value. So value of one, if you're new to my channel, uh, you will hear artists talk about values a lot. Value of one is like saying white, value of 10 is like saying black. So anywhere in between, you know, you have your other uh, shades there or, or values. So I'm somewhere between a five to a seven as far as darkness goes okay so let me see let me work on that sky a little bit um it's a warm kind of a sky i'm gonna start with the lighter part of the sky i'm using a little bit of orange a little bit of cerulean blue maybe a little bit more cerulean blue lots of white A little bit of red. I'm trying to put the paint on thick enough. So now we're going to work on the blues of the sky. Let's put cerulean. White. Maybe a little bit of a little um, ultramarine blue so sometimes get mixed up on my colors here there you go make makes it almost like a cobalt blue cerulean and ultramarine together a little bit of white uh, I am not really using any well I could use a little bit of burnt sienna too tone down this color so now I'm just shaping this cloud here a bit I'm letting it mix with some of the paint that I've already put on there there you go soften this up So basically I just sculpted that cloud that's all I did just went into it and sculpted it a little bit just let it flow you could always go back and uh, paint over it if you don't like it remember this is acrylic so not very many rules that go with acrylics acrylics is like the honey badger of paints so now I'm doing a uh, cerulean blue with a little bit of yellow, more on the blue side, a little bit more white here. So we have this lighter part of the sky here. There's going to be more mountain coming through here, so I'm not too concerned about. Now I see a little bit of mountain range here in the back, which follows a little, takes some of this ultramarine blue that I made over here. Cerulean, maybe a hint of this cad orange, some white. 
why I used orange is because, you know, uh, these far distant trees on the mountain ranges over there, um, it's almost like, you know, giving a little bit of a green tinge. Although you won't see it in your screen. There you go. And there's a little bit of another landmass going right through here, but we'll do that after once the paint dries a bit. My brush is a little bit wet there. Ugh. There you go. Okay, now let's fill in. It's still a little bit wet. I may work on this blue here a little bit more. Put another coat just in here. Um, as I don't want to see some of these streaks there. I kind of want a nice, even color. But anywho, um, let me work on some of this background. Just a quick reference photo again. I'm not trying to be exact. Like I said, it's just a reference photo, just, um, it's just there for exactly what it says, reference photo, that's all it is for. So I'm mixing burnt umber, ultramarine blue, a little bit of cad yellow. Sienna. It's a little bit too dark over here. It's okay, we could fix that. And as you can see, I'm still using the same pile of color. And then we're just gonna mix. Goes on top of that rock right here. And then right here, there's some lighter. Colors of grass. And we'll shape this. And when I say shape, uh, I will give you the notion of direction, meaning that I'm gonna show you the contours of this uh, mountainside here by uh, right now everything looks like 2D. I'll show you the contours just by uh, um, adding some of the other small details or landmass. Right now I just want to cover this canvas a bit. Now I'm keeping things relatively dark I see some cooler blues and some more whoops
As you can see, I'm not being too, too careful here. Add some burnt umber, burnt sienna, more cerulean blue. There's some darker shades here of green. Hell, let me just put ultramarine blue. Burnt umber. And yellow. Give me a nice, rich, warm green. So now we got the basic shape of it all. Okay, this is dry. Let me go back over that a little bit. So let me do a little bit of cerulean, a little bit of ultramarine, a hint of sienna let me see yep there you go let me sculpt that mountain a little bit more there i'm satisfied with that all right let me see Add more nuance here. And I can sculpt these mountains just a little bit more. Now remember, the sky is really not all that important to me. This area is what's going to be of most interest. So I will focus more on details and whatnot in this general vicinity because where you, this is where your center of focus is going to be. The rest is going to be like muted colors and really not that detailed as far as um, as far as the painting goes because I don't want to draw your eyes in that direction. Whoops. Remember when you're doing a painting you add more detail towards the center of interest and you blur out you blur out where you really um, don't want the viewer to focus because your eyes will naturally go to where is in focus not where it's blurry because it bothers your eyes. Wherever it's blurry, it bothers your eyes. So your eyes will redirect and go where um, the details are. Okay. So let me start working on this mountain. So now I'm working from back to front. And I may add a few details here and there, wherever I need it to be adjusted. But for now, we'll, we could skip that. So I'm going to be using a number four. This is a Princeton Polytip uh, synthetic brush. Very nice for the acrylics during the description. And this is a number four. So we're going to use that to work some of the grasses. So let's see. Uh, all right. So again, like I said, I don't want to be too detailed with the grass. So here we go, just a little bit cadmium orange, a little bit more yellow, maybe a little bit of ultramarine blue, a little bit of white, just very vary some of this actually maybe even a burnt 
maybe a little bit of alizarin crimson, tell you the truth. And this green here, it's gonna make it more of a grayish, grayish red back here. Now, I don't want this to be too light because if this becomes too light, then you will not see the highlights of light on these lighter areas. So this is where people run into problems. They, they tend to make things a little bit too light and then they wonder why their highlights don't pop. If the highlights don't pop, it's because your background, the surrounding colors are too light and the values are too close. So that's the trap a lot of artists fall into or at least beginning artists. They wonder why things don't turn out the way they thought it should. It's because your values are too close or just completely wrong. There you go. See, this is now, you see how I slanted that. Now it's telling the viewers the direction or the, the steepness of the mountains by me putting in a few few strokes of green here I just follow the contour and I'm letting some of this background colors as first layers that you see here show through okay that's what I like about acrylics and painting loose um, because the translucency let, allows the background colors to come through a little bit and uh, really stand out. So I'm gonna use ultramarine blue, burnt umber, even maybe a little bit of burnt sienna, maybe a little bit of yellow. Give a little bit of warmth here and there, not everywhere, just a little bit everywhere here. Add more cerulean blue, maybe ultramarine blue. Oh, what the hell just happened? So I'm putting these warm colors here and I'm varying from, you know, bluish, Some cool warm colors. There's another set right here of bushes. I'm gonna use another round brush, but this is a number four. The other one that I used earlier was a uh, number two. Okay, because now I'm the details are going to be smaller, so now I'm going to start um, well, not really working too much on details, but more like uh, in tighter spaces because I use my uh, biggest brush as far as I think I can for the moment. So let me see. There's some shapes of rocks. that now these values are too close so I know there's some darker areas as well so let me put those in a little bit of ultra uh, ultramarine blue and burnt umber maybe a little bit more on the burnt umber side and let me define some of these areas again I'm just sculpting I'm letting some colors mix together and some just there you go just giving you like a semblance like 
a semi realistic view there. It's really not 100% perfect. And as this dries, I could put another coat and it's going to be darker and darker and darker. And I'm letting some of the base color show through. There you go. So basically, I'm just giving you, it's basically just an idea. There's some that goes this way. So this is just giving you an idea of the contour of, all right. So let me work on some of these plants here. I see some. bluish green add some white to that maybe a little bit of yellow see that Now all these colors are kind of too close to each other. I do see some brownish yellow color in the back there. Mixed with then with a little bit of blue watch and it's going to change the whole entire thing here. There you go, just like that. Maybe a little bit more yellow, cerulean blue. Just a little bit everywhere, just here and there. Now you can see the shape of this little bush here on the side. And this little bit of warmth around this bush right under it, right here. And I'm not doing it everywhere, I'm just parts here and there. I'm just varying my greens from grayish greens to, you know, more luminescent greens. And I'm gonna work on that rock kind of like last, almost last, at least. A little bit here, there you go. There's some wild flowers I see in the back here. Uh, gonna use some high chroma yellow here. Maybe I shouldn't high chrome. I just mix it in a little bit with that green here, which is will mute it down. I want the highest chroma right up here. So this um, flower, actually it's a little bit orangey yellow. Maybe put a little bit of cerulean blue to this, mute it down. I see a lot of flowers and you notice I'm not being detailed with these flowers because they're way the hell out in the distance there so there's really no sense and and uh, give any kind of definition until they come up closer there's some here there and notice, look, I'm just like using the broad side of my brush. So it kind of tells you there's flowers there and we'll, we'll detail this a little bit better afterwards. So I'm kind of scrubbing. As I'm coming closer, I'm gonna add a little bit of white, more yellow. I'm gonna start putting these flowers a little bit more parted. There's a clump right there, clump of flowers. 
and you notice how it got from dull to a little bit brighter. I just add a little bit of white and more chromatic. There's a clump of flowers here as well. And I haven't even gotten to the grass yet. I haven't even gotten to um, and this is even kind of more of a muted colors. There's not, it's not the brightest I can go yet because now I'm going to be working on the grass a little bit more. And the grass is going to cover some of these. So as to give it, you know, depth, you know, I'm going to push, pull, meaning I'm going to put, let some grass go between these flowers and then I'm going to add more flowers, then more grass blades around it. That's what I mean by push and pull. But before I do that, let me start working on this rock over here. Um, start giving it more definition. Let me just use the big round brush. Ultramarine blue, burnt umber. Maybe a little bit of crimson. All right, let's let's start defining this rock. Notice how now it's a little bit darker. As you keep adding layers and layers, it will get darker and darker and darker because I'm using semi-transparent colors. Now, I could start introducing more opaque colors uh, if I don't really want to work in too many layers, but the thing is I find those layers are advantageous because you can see behind the striations of the strokes that I put there and it'll just be like, you know, striation on the rock itself. You know, these small little details just what gives the painting its vibrancy and its, and its quality. there and I'm letting some of the base color show through here put a bit of yellow maybe a little, a little bit sienna some up here I'm just looking scanning in my picture really fast and whatever catches my eye is what's going to get painted because it's, if it's catching my eye right off the bat it must mean that it's something that my eye deems important to look at and most likely will be something the viewer viewer will most likely pay attention to. Okay. Let me just blend the base a little bit here, just like that, so I don't have these sharp edges here. There you go. I'm gonna work to my advantage here in a few minutes. Now I'm going to start working on some of these nuances of colors in the rock to give it a little bit more definition. So I'm still going to use this big brush here. Uh, I see some ultramarine blue, maybe perhaps a little bit of yellow, giving it the green, and then perhaps a little bit of maybe orange it's gonna make it like a gray down green more on the bluish side there you go 
maybe a little bit of crimson. A little bit of white. I see some right here, some. So I'm still using a big brush here. I'm not even going for my small brush for details. Put more white. Define this rock a little bit more. And look at the direction of the rocks here and all these pit holes. Just look at the direction which way they go. There's a little bit of light coming through here. It's all about paying attention to these little nuances. And I know I'm painting over some of the stuff that I already did, and it's okay. More blues. Again, still using a big brush. Not being too careful about where I'm going here, just there you go. And if you screwed up somewhere, like you want to make darks, you can still go back over what you just did. Ultramarine blue, burnt umber, a lot of ultramarine blue. And I can make even darker darks. There you go, just like that. If I feel like I put too much in one area, just go back over it. Once it's dry, the paint is dry, or you feel it's close to being dry. If I want a darker, darker color, I can actually use a Prussian, Prussian blue with burnt umber. I can get darker darks. So I'm going to use a lot of white, a little bit of orange, maybe a little bit of ultramarine blue, and start working on these highlights, maybe a little bit more orange, I see it's a little bit warmer. a little bit of crimson and maybe a little bit of ultramarine blue to tone down this orange and more white Keep adding a little more blue and white as I'm going away from the sun here. And just remember the contour. So the sun apparently is moving in this direction here from what I can tell. And this is the part to be like kind of creative with your rock and you know describe it how you'd like to adding a little bit more blue as I'm going back here see it going like this
this a little bit. And I'm not really making, keeping my brush wet. I'm trying to keep it on a little bit more on the dry side because if I put it too wet, uh, what's gonna happen is um, I'm gonna have too much of a sharp line and I really don't want these sharp lines here. I just want this uh, mixed feeling this roughness on the rocks. Now I'm just like trying to paint the contours. Now I'm adding a little bit of water to my brush because the back end right here, I just want to show a little bit. Let me add some cerulean blue because it's going to be in shadow. Cerulean blue, maybe a little bit of ultramarine blue. Let me go back to making a nice highlight here. A little bit of this orange goes a long way. I shouldn't have put that much out, but anywho. Put some brighter highlights here and there, I guess. Afraid to use your fingers. Now, there's some nuances of darks. cavities here that you see here and there I could use like a small rigger brush or like you know Refer to your to your reference photos for how some of these rock the pits, I guess the little cavities, how they're shaped. Some dark, some light. Use your finger if it's too dark. Some are a little bit darker. And you see I put the lighter colors first in order to do this so I can better gauge how dark or how light some of these cavities have to be. looking like a rock a little bit. 
Uh, hold on. It's more flat top here. All right, so now let me start working on the grass. Um, I'm gonna start with I'm gonna use this um, filbert. This is a Royal Ling Nickel Zen uh, Z93T. It's a uh, number eight. And the reason why I'm going to use this is because I can get some nice sharp, sharp edges with that. I'm going to start painting some grasses. Let me see if I find a nice area here somewhere. All right, lots of yellow. Perhaps a little bit of cerulean blue. Just giving some uh, some body and I'm glazing over some of the colors that I already put down. Just to give it more texture I see some Ooh, what did I do here clean your brush right take water on your brush and then just there you go beauty of acrylics all right let's try this again now blue yellow maybe a little bit of burnt sienna and more blue Put some of these stalks of flower. Now I don't even know the exact name of these flowers, folks, so don't crucify me. I've made mistakes before naming flowers. Um, I'm a Florida boy here, so I don't know these mountain flowers. But all I can tell you they're mountain flowers. There you go. Putting the tops of these bulbs here.
rigor brush. This is a number one zero or one aught, I guess. I believe this is from Princeton uh, Golden Taclon. So now I start making some more. nuances here. Use more white. I probably could benefit from I'm making like these large C strokes. what I can benefit from some Prussian blue let me put out some Prussian blue here uh, make some nice nice greens there you go really nice greens here this is why I made it nice and brown over here very earthy color nice warm earthy color now I'm using like these nice cool cool colors, put some here, there, more yellow, a lot of white, Trying to keep a nice pointed edge. vary some of these greens.
Now, I'm gonna make this front here a little bit darker. So let me go with this Prussian and burnt umber, maybe a little bit of crimson. some yellow just glaze here and there there you go some basically a little bit of glazing effect let's do some right here a little bit don't be afraid to use your hands there you go, just like that. Maybe some orange. Now, I'm gonna make this front here a little bit darker. So let me go with this Prussian and burnt umber, maybe a little bit of crimson. some yellow just glaze here and there there you go some basically a little bit of glazing effect let's do some right here a little bit don't be afraid to use your hands there you go, just like that. Maybe some orange. So now I'm probably gonna use a little bit more of a pure yellow over here. See, there's some. Notice how it shows like really nicely in some of these darks here. That yellow is just popping out. That's why, like I said, if your colors are not standing out as you want them, it's most likely because the surrounding colors are impeding. Either, either they're not dark enough or not muted enough and the values are too close. Put some nice thick blobs of paint here. Now as you get closer, you can make these flowers a little bit more descriptive. I feel like I can use some darks. Let me see. Prussian blue, ultramarine. I mean, Prussian blue and burnt umber here. Um, some of these stems here, let me see.
All right, now something a little bit more fun. This these orange, bright orange. Um, Flowers Let's put another one here somewhere. Perhaps a few here. Some highlight. to find some of these stems here. few minor details here. There's this rock right here. Put some flowers here too. Between the two. There you go. Give it some distance.
some highlights. Let's use some more pure color. All right. Well, I hope you found this uh, tutorial a little bit helpful. Um, so just a quick recap. We started with the darks. Okay, we started with the thin wash, really. And then remember acrylics, you have to work in layers. Your first layer is gonna be the crappy one. Second one, it's gonna be okay. It's when you start adding the third mid-tone values and, every, and all that, your painting will start to develop. So the important thing here is to not give up on your painting right away, okay? Uh, you're making a big mistake when you do that. A lot of people tend to do, you know, just that because it's not coming out the way they expect it to be right off the bat and they just really kind of give up and you don't want to do that. Your painting doesn't want you to do that. Don't give up. So, um, if you have any questions on about what materials I used or um, or technical questions, please feel free to ask. Uh, I'm pretty prompt about responding to comments. Sorry, I'm painting and just noticed. That. There you go. Needs a little bit of something there. So. Basically, I started with the middle value, meaning from a 1 to 10, I use like a 5 to 7, meaning as how dark or how lights are. And as you can see, the initial colors were very transparent, very light. You were able to see the uh, back of the canvas a little bit. And we used that to our advantage, and that's okay. And then you go back and glaze over or even use thicker paint as you want, because you can do that with acrylics right out, you know, as soon as it's dry. And they just kept adding, adding, adding color. So if, as you replay the, the video, you can see the steps at how this was much lighter. And by adding more steps to it, more layers, it just got darker and darker and darker. Same here. I just started with one unicolor. And then I started sculpting with some of the darks to make it darker and some, you know, highlights here and there or midtone values. And that is the beauty of acrylics. Now, the only downside to acrylics is just the fact that it doesn't have the same covering power or softness as oil. But hey, you know, each medium has its pros and cons. And, uh, you know, you could get some amazing, amazing effects with acrylics. So uh, I could even go even darker with this if I really wanted to, but I'm not. You know, I'm probably going to leave it the way it is. I'm satisfied with the end results here. So I'm going to sign this painting here and uh, I'm use this liner brush so I'm just using a liner So, like I said, just to recap, I you want to block in all the colors, all the mid values first. You know, um, not too dark, not too light. Cover the whole canvas so you'll be able to judge your values a little bit better, whether how dark or how light you need to go. Uh, so I knew this was going to be my lightest color, so everything kind of worked off of this and those darks that I worked over here. And you'll be able to better judge the colors that are going to be coming on next, whether how dark or how light. And I still think I could have gone a little bit darker in the foreground. I could still glaze this and make it even a little bit darker. But we're going to leave it as it is. You got to see how I went from, you know, a lighter color and I just went a little bit darker here. Um, what else can I tell you? Um, it's just important to, to, to know how to mute your colors. Okay, you don't want too bright of colors when you're painting, whether it's acrylics or oil, it doesn't matter. You want to work with more muted colors because when you work with muted colors, the importance of that is that when you put lighter colors on top, they will stand out more. Okay. And when you use complement colors next to each other, they, they feed off each other and actually enhance, um, 
the, the colors uh, and they just work in harmony together. So uh, if you feel like I missed something or I forgot to tell you something, uh, like I said, add it in the comments and I'm pretty prompt about answering your questions there. And I hope you this was a little bit helpful to you. And like I said, this was a very loose impressionistic style of painting. Uh, you don't have just to show you don't have to be detailed. You can still convey a message or a scene through your eyes in a quick way and with very little you could say a lot. So with that folks I want to say thank you and uh, have a good day and uh, we'll see you on your next painting. All right now. Bye bye. Oh don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.